Riders ready, watch the gate. Hey, welcome back to the Dirty Knobs Podcast. I'm your host, Hollywood Mike Miranda, and my co-hosts are, as always, JV James Vicente and EC Eric Carter. On this episode, oof, the doozy, the one we were waiting for, the one we were prepping for. I mean, we just didn't feel like we were ready to do it yet, but finally, Oz himself, man. Uh, it's a great trip. Uh, we learned a lot. And uh, man, he is every bit as special as we thought he would be. So enjoy, relax, have a blast, listen to it all. And uh, and don't forget to listen to the new Ultramax commercial. Thanks again for tuning in and make sure you uh, like, subscribe. Got to get to a thousand. So JV has to get his tattoo. And uh, hey, keep it dirty. Oh, oh man. Look at the hey. shirt. Oh, dude, represent. Wait, hold on, hold on a second. Look at this guy up here. He's uh, I'm representing, dude. You're more than representing. You got the shirt, <laughs> you got a haircut, you I shaved, got a haircut, I shaved. What the hell, dude? I feel like I'm getting ready for a job interview right now. I was like, hey, oh. hey, I'm not. I I'm right in that same boat, man. I actually was sat down at nine twenty one. That's amazing. Honest. But I, I think I had too much coffee this morning. I had to take three trips. Oh. oh. Uh, there's three trains to Dusseldorf this morning. <laughs> Whoa, that's impressive, man. Yeah, <laughs> they were high, they were high speed trains too. <laughs> well, dude, I got up. Uh, I got up early. I got uh, up early. Early. I uh, I shaved. I trimmed my nose hairs everything yeah just in Jeez. case man just in case Dude, i mean hey. i mean talk right? about wow this is uh can't believe how nervous i am how nervous i was calling him for the first time oh were yeah. you more nervous than than with the john cruise one yes but for a different reason absolutely okay. more nervous for this than i was for john cruise because of I mean, it's like calling Moses or, you know, yeah. Oh man, it is. I mean, really it's a big, it to me is a big deal. It's, you know, who's, who do you hold in highest esteem in the entire sport? Right. Uh, yeah. it's tough, tough, I, to, true. tough to hold was, anyone more. I was a little nervous for, um, for the one with Stu, just because I, I didn't really know. I mean, I've talked with Stu multiple times in sense of podcast. I've talked to him a bunch more like, this weekend he was at the races and I talked, man, I talked with Stu for like 15, 20 minutes. It was fantastic. I was a little nervous for that one, but I don't know. I don't know him very well. Um, and like you said, dude, it is, it's like talking to Moses, man. It's, it's Oz. Yeah, it's it Oz. I know it's yeah. pretty wild, dude. I, I mean, I was, I thought about it. I, you guys know me, man. I freestyle the whole time, dude. And as we were texting back and forth yesterday, Hollywood. I mean, I was thinking about it all day yesterday at work, like on the tractor, working the bucket and just thinking like, oh my gosh, dude, like what kind of questions can I ask him? I only came up with a couple. Well, but hold on to them. Let me just tell you this. I know. You know, I normally have notes. I have bullet points that yeah. I work off of. Yeah. I don't. Mm. I didn't. I didn't because there are three things I want to make sure I say I get out and there's no way I, I would forget to tell these three things. Yeah. So I know I got these three. Man. And, and if I get, if I only get two, that's good too. That's all right. But the oh, three, I, you know, the three, I want to make sure I get covered. There's no way I would mess up. Yeah. JV, are you, were you nervous at all about? Not, I don't think as nervous as you guys. Cause I don't really hey. know. Hey, you know, you know like, what it is? You know what it is, Hollywood? What's that? Eh. Eh. <laughs> eh. Eh. Yeah, it's the president of the United States, and it's, uh, you know, it's, meh. Eh. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, you know, of course, you, you know who he is. I, I wasn't as, as close. I mean, you guys were in the office, and, you know, I've never been to the office. So I think it's a little bit different for me. It's more like. 
I don't know, like, uh, like meeting somebody that you've only seen in magazines for the most part or heard about from somebody else. So I'm not as nervous. I don't think as you Jesus. guys. So he what is- you're saying, it was the first time you saw me. It was like, yeah, yeah, you're all right. That's what, <laughs> that's what this is. <laughs> he was, he was mythical to me, man. Like, yeah. Seriously. Like, uh, and I mean, we'll, we'll touch on it on the, on the podcast as well, man. But like, even the image that he created for the whole thing. Was, no, I think I think you're right. I mean, in that way, his yeah, writing, I, yeah, right. I mean, I, right. In in that way, super awesome. You know, like from the, the myth, we, from the mystical, mythical Smoky Mountain top, yeah. high above. <laughs> I mean, he, the way he would just tell the story about oh, we're going to get tacos, right? And it was Dude, just a big, yeah. If you if you didn't, and and keep in mind, man, I was. 10 years old, right? Like yeah. I was 10 years old when I was really start. I mean, I started when I was eight, but I was probably 10 when I really started reading stuff. And I mean, dude, I really thought it was like a mist and shrouded mountaintop that was super secretive, like FBI style <laughs> wizard publications. <laughs> like the writers were like these special agents. I mean, dude, it was crazy, right? Because you're 10. So you're like, right. when you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, man. Can you imagine just being able to look at the place? Right, right. Dude, I, I, I don't want to tell him this one, that, but I didn't like cats yeah. until until he said, oh, we got a cat. His name's Cosmo and he's so cool. And I was like, yep. all right, I guess cats are all right there. Yeah. He hyped his cat. Yeah, his cat, Cosmo. <laughs> Cosmo would have an Instagram today. Oh, Cosmo would have more followers than the three of us put together. Yeah. (laughs) Cosmo is an influencer. Yeah, I know. What a crazy thing. Well, shall we we just do it? Oh, we got piss. Oh, go. Go, go. Ah. Every time, if I didn't do it, no, you go. just went to Dusseldorf three times and now you're. I know, but uh, you know, like when your dog shits. Now you got to go to Pittsburgh? Yeah, your dog (laughs) shits but doesn't piss. Oh, we are so dialed in pro. It's scary. <laughs> it's scary. Oh my gosh. I wonder if those big name podcast guys ever have to do this. I don't know. Do you think they ever jump up in the middle of their of their intro and to go, go pee? Go to yeah. Dusseldorf. <laughs> God dang. Well, JV, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh it's a this is a special one it's a banger it's a big yeah. one um you know he he hasn't been on anyone else's i don't know how often he'd do it but uh i feel like it's a i feel like we're lucky to have him we're lucky that we we're lucky we have him yeah absolutely absolutely i mean especially he doesn't do many uh, you know like Dude. i mentioned to you finding info finding info was hard you Whew. know like very difficult to find it's very very kind of quiet kind of quiet on you know the social front yeah well he's big on what he does now i'm, I'm anxious to ha- hear about that too and have yeah. him share that okay that wasn't much of a piss dude it was like a yeah. you know like when you go before your third main you think you, you just, gotta go because oh, you're nervous dude that's a nervous pee <laughs> yeah he jumped off because he couldn't wait any longer that was oh, an mp shit. yeah we did it while you were gone it was it's all good. <laughs> oh all right All right, here we go. Hey, take a deep breath, count to three, and just start pedaling towards the big double. Dude, you wait till you hear the story. Oh, shit. Should we we be this nervous? My hands are sweating. He's going to laugh when he sees this later. He's going to be like, what's wrong with these guys? Yeah, laughing at us. Exactly. (laughs) You know what he's going to say? He's going to say, Eh, eh, eh. I mean, he's a pro. So you guys you know, know I'm listening to you, right? Oh no! <laughs> no, I didn't realize that. I heard the handsome part, and uh... <laughs> oh my gosh! Love it. Well, yeah, it. <laughs> our our special, our most special guest to this point in our podcast, and I don't know if we could ever get any more special than right now to have Bob Osborne Oz. The famous Oz, the famous. as our guest on the Dirty Knobs podcast. Huh? I don't Welcome. Know. Uh, thanks, you guys. 
I love I'm it. All puffed, I'm all puffed up after that one. <laughs> <laughs> so oh who's this? Gosh. Eric Carter, right? That's me. Okay, I don't think we ever met, did we? Or, or if we you... did, it was kind of <clears throat> briefly. Literally, uh, you know, I talked with Mike about this. It was uh, one time doing some photo shoot, um, passing through the hallways uh, of the office type thing. Um, you know, I wasn't very fast on my bike and didn't really warrant or deserve to be in the magazine until I was probably 15 or 16. So, um, and at that time, it was kind of, you were, uh, you know, uh, Guyby was heavily involved. Wendy was heavily involved. Um, Gork. Uh, a little bit later than that and even spike so yeah met you met you in the office just one time in passing and um i wish i'd have been faster sooner, <laughs> <laughs> faster sooner. here's what i remember i don't remember meeting you in person but i used to do all of the results i had to i had to type all the results of the races up which is a pain in the butt yeah uh but i used to come across eric carter a lot <laughs> so, yeah. I, so i got it from that point yeah, I had a good, I had a good, I had a good run for uh, a couple of years. So, um, you know, it was, it was good. I'm, I'm, I was blessed to have a good run and have Mike as a, as a great mentor as well. So, um, yeah, my name got in the results a little bit. It did. I think <laughs> I was phasing out when you were phasing in. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I wish I had, faster sooner would have been a lot better, man. Faster sooner. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, introduce me to the other guy here. And and my best man, uh, James Vicente, JV. Hey, Bob. Uh, we and haven't again, we JV. Didn't... Yes, JV. sir, yeah. JV. Hi, buddy. I'm I'm Bob. <laughs> hey, Bob. Nice to meet you. We 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 didn't get to meet. I'm a Northeast guy, East Coast racer for the most part. Um, but uh, my gosh, I mean, if if you if anyone grew up in BMX and and didn't recognize your name, then then uh, then they weren't really riding a bike. So. Uh, I am I am honored to to meet you and excited to to get to know you a little better. Thanks. I'm honored you guys are having me on this thing. Oh man. Oh man. Well, it's holy grail. No, it's true. So yeah. uh, JV Montana. I live in the middle of Montana. I don't see BMX stuff <laughs> very <laughs> often. I love it. You guys Do are you... digging out of snow still. I think. Over no, there, it's you? it's like the Bahamas out there right now. Oh, okay. I think it's about fifty degrees, something like that. <laughs> Now we haven't had a snowstorm for I don't know a couple of weeks. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. Well, JV, why don't you uh you want to give us our stats? All right, all right. Let's see what I got here. Bob, you're gonna have to jump in if we got this wrong at all. But let's see. I got a we got a couple of bullets here. 1974 started in a magazine photography business by submitting pictures, stories, and articles in BMX News. Yeah, early okay. around early 1976 was going to buy BMX news, but at the mm -hmm. last minute, they more than tripled the price on you. It wasn't they, it was Elaine. I oh, love Elaine. She's such a nice lady. I've seen her recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a big deal. What you just said there. All right. 30,000. Uh, let's see. $30,000 from a loan on your house. You, uh, sorry, uh, Man, and, loans from, this stuff? and loans from family and friends, the guy, the guy up there in the yellow shirt, uh, from family and friends started bicycle motocross action. That was for $30,000. Just oh, hold on a second. Let me just a minute. Let me throw one thing in here. Is that okay? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Can I interrupt here anytime I want? Yeah, yeah. Anytime, anytime I want. Okay. Anything you want. Yeah. Here's what happened. Uh, uh, I was, uh, Wendy and I were submitting photographs and stories to um, BMX News, Elaine, Elaine Holt. Uh, I love that lady. Uh, okay, and so she was going to sell it to me, and I was trying to figure out if I could do it, be on the fire department and all that kind of stuff. And and then the the accountant told Elaine to quadruple the price, and and that didn't work. Actually, I laughed. Very impolite. <laughs> I apologize, Elaine, if you're watching this. Uh, so here's what I did. I I had in my head uh, a, a a vision, if you'll allow that, of a BMX magazine, and it was brilliant. Uh, and so what I did was I went around to a few uh, publishers. 
uh, Golden, what's his name? I can't remember his first name, at High Torque. Uh, I think I might have gone to Peterson Publishing. I went to some guy that published uh, race boat magazines. And, and I'm telling them about this brilliant idea and they're all going, yawn, you know, and <laughs> well, we're starting up a van magazine. And so anyway, so one day after trying to talk some people into doing this, uh, this is how I remember this in my head. One day I'm the only guy standing there and I'm, and I'm looking around and there ain't anybody, there ain't anybody there, but me. And so kind of right then is right then said, well, <laughs> if it's going to get done, I guess I'm going to do it. And I'm so glad those guys were sound asleep. I'm so glad they were <laughs> because that magazine and the whole world changed. Y so yes. yeah, that was just one thing right in that. that yeah, is, I wanted to insert in there. Uh, yes. Our, our world changed too. My yes. world chat, man, the world chat. We, you, uh, uh, here's one. I'll say this about 20 times while we're talking. Uh, uh, we, we changed the world. We did. Yes. Uh, yes. You mm -hmm. want proof of that? Go, go look at the Olympics. Right. Back then we're a bunch of classical dunces. <laughs> they didn't see anything except classical sports, and now we're in there, and yeah. we did that. You, you, yeah, you know what I think is, um, and it's one of the things I was going to touch on. I'm just going to do it right now because it's a good segue into it. I, I, I can't, I can't fathom, I can't grasp how big. Like, if you could do an org chart or a family tree or something like that on when BMXA started, the vertical rise in popularity of it the influence that it had and then the the scope of people that it touched and the scope of people they touched right like you, you're not it's not yeah, an exaggeration yeah exactly and, and i it is not even a slight exaggeration that it literally changed the world because people that mm -hmm. came from bmx and i believe the influence that you created through your magazine I think it changed people. I really I do think it, it? for sure. Me, me and my magazine. So, well, so what? I'm operating in a vacuum out there. There's nobody else involved. No, there but you know what? Guys racing who are brilliant. There aren't. It took. It on took there. one guy. Yes. It took one guy to take a loan on his house. Yep. Yeah. To ask his sister for money and ask yeah. his friend for money. Yeah. To put his, if you will, his balls on the line. Yeah. Well, already being a hero, working as on a the fireman. Chopping block, buddy. <laughs> yeah, on the chopping. <laughs> Listen, and you're already a fireman, so you're already a hero and working. To take uh, this on, on top of that, that took one guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? Well, and, and, he, and here's the other thing about that. You had a vision, and you said you your words. Oh, I did. I'm going to use your words. You had a vision of a fantastic BMX magazine. I did. I, I, I did. Clearly. I would go out to these races, watch you guys, watch you guys racing. Yep. And that's where that vision came from. Well, yeah. li li think about this. Thir the loan was $30,000, right? Around $30,000. In yeah. 1986, it was valued between eight and $10 million. That is amazing. Right, that you talk about EC really? when you talked about growth. How much inflation, huh? <laughs> <laughs> here's here's another thing. Issue number Holy one. Crap. Let me issue, tell you another one. Yeah. JV, hang yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, keep yeah. interrupting you. Sorry, no, no, buddy. go ahead. Uh, here's what I didn't know. Uh, a lot of times, it, it's really good that you don't have all the information. A lot of mm -hmm. times, it really is. This is one time. Here's what I didn't know. I found out years later at it at that moment in time, the late 70s, the attrition rate of magazines, startup magazines, the attrition rate, 95% died. 95%. But I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't know that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't too. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. I don't know 
I, I don't, I really don't know that I'm that brave if I'm looking at Jesus crying 95%, 95% chance of dying here. Hey man, I, you I know didn't what you, know that. You know, you know what you saw? You saw five for 5% 5 chance of success is what you saw. No, yeah. I didn't see it at all. I didn't know that for a That's, couple of years later. Yeah. Uh, uh, the publishing, the uh, printing company guys who are all experts on magazines because they printed them all the time told me that but it was years later so no i didn't i wasn't put through that test well, uh, I think i'm just it was just dumb me thinking yes. man this could be such a cool magazine and, I, I, ignorance is bliss and you lower yeah. that number down from 95 to 94. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> there's a stat for you jv 94 <laughs> He, he yeah. changed the number. He moved the needle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's amazing as I look at these, at, at all these numbers here. I mean, the first issue, of course, in 1976 in December, it cost a buck. Uh, it was 48, it? Was okay. 48 pages long, six pages of color, and you printed 10,000 copies. That many, by, huh? by 1986, and print, can I interrupt yeah. you again, Jamie? Yeah, of course. Go for you it. You know who bought the first subscription? Oh, this Go is a good it. one. That's an IQ test, you guys. Memory mm -hmm. test. First subscription. We mimeograph. Do you guys know what a mimeograph is? I do. Yeah. You guys are just pups. It's a, <laughs> it, it's a way we used to print things. It was some goofy. Eh. Anyway, we mimeograph. On, on regular old paper, uh, a few uh, uh, subscription blanks and went out to a race and Motima bought the first subscription. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. The other thing was that those magazines we printed, I remember 5,000, but 10, you got, you got some good numbers there. So some more 5,000 to 10,000. Uh, do you guys remember the Arvada Street Gang? No, There's a bunch of kids no. that lived on my block and they're all hanging out at my house all the time. Uh, anyway, those kids and uh, some friends of mine and, and Wendy and RL and I are all out in the garage of my house packaging all of these magazines to send free to bicycle shops of that first issue. We packaged every single package, sent every single thing. Amazing. I'm just, wow i'm just keeping it really i'm keeping jv kind of <laughs> into the details here <laughs> jv well yeah i know you have that number for the 86 print count what was that you want to guess me yeah so it yeah, started at, it started oh, at 10,000 it started at 10,000 you guys don't know <laughs> oh yeah started at 10,000 right in 76 and in 86 was ec I, I have no idea, dude. 150,000. Nah. <laughs> no? Higher? Well, hold it a second. I have to do this a different way. Uh, by 86, we're printing about uh, five titles, something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Let me throw a retrospect in here. Yes. In retrospect, I never, never, never should have thought that we were going to be a Peterson publishing company with eight or 10 titles in retrospect, which I'm really good at. I should have stuck with BMX action and freestyling. If, if I would have stuck there, I'd have been a billionaire right now. <laughs> Instead but of a anyway, multimillionaire. Go back to yeah, that. Yeah. So we had about five <laughs> titles by, by 86. We were printing 500,000 copies of Whoa. magazines per month of which I think BMX Action was about 250,000. Uh, freestyling was, freestyling was in startup mode. It was only a year or two old. So it was probably 100,000, something like that, maybe 150. And the rest were these other magazines. Wow. Wow. So that's amazing. That that's is amazing. amazing. That is, that's absolutely, yeah. We're def definitely off on that number. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> so where'd you get all these where'd you get all these numbers from? <laughs> we we just scour the internet and then we uh and then we wake up homeless people under the bridge and ask them questions. <laughs> hey, Where, wherever we can wherever we get them. Yeah. Or if you can't find them there, just make them up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I have voices in my head. 
yeah. All those crashes without a helmet. I have voices in my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I, I'm sure we all have serious questions to ask you or, or a yeah. series of questions. Uh, but I, I, And I have uh, two stories I want to make sure I get to tell. So let me start with my first one. Um, the very first photo session I ever got to go on, Oz, you, uh, you may or may not remember it, but I, it's, it's, it's a just, uh, you know, emblazoned on my brain. It's tattooed on my forehead. It's just, I, uh, I was not invited really. It was, a, it was supposed to be a photo session with Kevin McNeil and Lee Medlin. I, they had told me they were doing it. So I went out to my local place called Sand Hills. And we had already made the super steep jump so you could get big air. Well, Kevin McNeil could was not much of a jumper. Not he, It was okay, but he wasn't much of a jumper. And at this point in his career, he was in the long and the tooth. And, you know, he was, we were like, oh, what are you going to do? He wanted to jump for distance. And was like, well, that's not for a photo session. Lee Medlin, world champion, Lee Medlin, was also at the photo shoot. It was his photo shoot. And Lee, who will always argue this, he is a good jumper. He always yeah. says he's not, but he is a good jumper. And to this day, he's such a stylish writer, but he always denies it. But it was his. It was his. So it was McNeil that said, hey, make, make sure you bring all your stuff. Bring your uniform. And I was just, I think I just got my first set of leathers and jersey that matched. Pink. And it was- Were they pink? <laughs> This is before pink. It was on oh. CW. It was on CW. Now CW had not gotten any really magazine coverage yet. It was a brand new company. And I was just a local, you know, really at that point, just a local racer. You know, I hadn't really done anything at any nationals yet, but I got to tag along and just to, you know, and then you park, you have to park quite a ways away from where, where the jump is. And so we're all there in the morning. Of course, I'm there super early and up comes a white Porsche. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's Oz. And in his Porsche, of course he's in his Porsche. He gets out and he's got a big, you know, fairly sizable camera bag with all kinds of stuff in it. And so he didn't know me. I introduced myself and I, I said, can I carry your bag for you, sir? <laughs> kind of like me right now wearing my shirt, just <laughs> sucking out for, right from the get go. Can I carry you your bag for you, sir? Here, have you. <laughs> So I carried his bag this quarter mile of a walk to where the jump was. And uh, the guy showed up and everyone and they and they jumped and they they jumped and they shot a few photos. And um, and Kevin go and Kevin McNeil said, hey, Miranda, go once. You should go once. And then uh, he said it in front of Oz. So I said, OK, got all my stuff on. And like you said, like you guys said, dude, I went as fast as i took went faster than i normally go took that extra two pedals and blasted as high as i could get and through the biggest flattest tabletop and held it all the way until i hit the ground just and uh, and i remembered i could hear everyone hooping and oz going Woo! and I, was, I just could not believe it i was like i did it, i did it so and then of course i pick myself up dust myself off and oz goes hey can you do that again dude i did that until my legs broke off i just kept going you know every yeah, time one was, more time yeah one, one more, time. more time we're up about 35 40 times one more if time. he if oz had said hey can you go up in the air take your helmet off spin around three times i would say yeah yeah i can do it i can do it i can do it so that's the part of the story that's that that is fantastic but here's here's the part that I really get to share. And that is, so we're done with the photo session. I can't believe I get to jump in front of Oz. Oz took my picture. Well, what I didn't tell you was on the way to get to the track, you have to drive right past our local high school. And so now we're going to go, we're all going to go have pizza. We're all going to go get something to eat afterwards. And we're going to go to a pizza place that's across the street. And so we all start to ride. And Oz says to me, hey, uh, I'm going to ride with these guys. Can I ride your bike? And I, I looked around like, what, what does he mean? And he hands me his keys to his Porsche. And I was. Did I do that? Yes, sir, you did. <laughs> yes, sir, you did. Just a minute. I have to. I, <laughs> uh, you did. I and so you did ride ahead of me. So I couldn't go around and take off in your car. 
Uh, but so it's it's Kevin McNeil, Lee Medlin, and Oz riding my CW out in front of me, and they kept going, and and I waited, and then I couldn't believe it. I'm going to drive a Porsche in in the, on the along the back fence of my high school, and all I kept thinking was, you know, roll down the window, put my sunglasses, yeah, pretty, <laughs> act like I know how to drive a stick and know what I'm doing, <laughs> and I just said, please, please, you know, if there is a God, please. <laughs> and sure enough, and sure enough, just then the high school, I was probably the girls track meet or something, came running around the back fence. And I was like, oh, this cannot get better. This just cannot get better. <laughs> and that was my first. And, and to say it got better, I got a hot shot, a full page color picture. That was my first picture in the magazine. Yeah, that's and, awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. Cool. I love stories like this because I forget them. <laughs> and and that's that was that's brilliant well that's like i said stupid, i would but it's never kind of forget that too i would never forget would any gonna... detail of that <laughs> yeah. ah. the whole thing is good the whole yeah. good. right that was a the good one thing. miranda yeah <laughs> and to end up to end up that's how i got in the magazine and and you know some people might say getting in the magazine was the greatest part oh i don't i don't know right. about that <laughs> yeah. that was the one story i had to make sure i got to tell well, um, that was a good one. Well, then you know, I have a... And you know what? Now, it, it's probably because you just told me, but vaguely, vaguely, uh, I remember that. And uh, vaguely, vaguely, I remember that. That was probably in the early 80s, 81. It, 81 or eight, it might have been 1982, somewhere right somewhere in there. In there. Kind yep. of a little bit early in the 80s. Yes, sir. Okay. I love stories like that because they're... Yeah, uh, 85, man. 85 years old, you start forgetting a few things, you know? <laughs> so, well, by the I way, to... behind you, yes, what's sir. the picture behind you? It's a, uh, a that, somebody at tabletop. That's uh, me, a photo by Wendy. Uh, that looks like a really good photo. For it me, is. It I was uh, in 1986 when I, when I was the luckiest guy ever, and I won the Nora Cup, which is right here. Oh, no um, kidding. You know how much yes, those sir? things are worth now? Um, it, priceless. <laughs> well, no, I mean in cash dollars. Because no, have, there are have, have, a few guys, have, a few, two guys that I know of have sold Nora Cups. Uh, of course, the two guys that sold them have two or three each or four or five or something like that. So here's what I heard. Um Let's see, hold it. I, I can tell you this, but I can't tell you who. Okay. Because, okay. because for the guy to tell me, he made me promise not to reveal who he is. Uh, now, can I tell who sold it? Let me just say a famous freestyler at, who won the Nora Cup sold his bike and the Nora Cup to a guy for fifty thousand yeah. dollars. About, I think it was about eight months ago. Wow! Wow! That's, that's stunning, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And and I think the Nora Cup went for five, six, seven thousand in there. That's just, you know, all these things. I said, I look back. There was a time. When uh, after I left and went up north and got into fine art photography and stuff like that, a few years went by. There was a time when I used to think, you know, someday I'm going to meet somebody. Someday, I don't know when, I don't know what year it'll be, but someday I'm going to meet somebody and we're going to be having a conversation and BMX action is going to pop up into the conversation and I, and we're going to go oh that's so cool i love it that you remember that and then and then you guys uh, you guys probably saw the movie um joe kid oh yes sir okay so mark and the other guy this would this would have been in what in the 90s 90 eh, i don't know 91 92 93 94 95 i don't know whenever they did that yeah uh so those guys called me up mark i think it was called me up at my house and he says we're filming a movie about bmx 
and we would like to interview you. And I'm going, uh, so who do you work for? Because I think he's pulling some kind of scam on me. Nobody wants to film movies about BMX. And he <laughs> says, no, it's just me. And I can't remember the other guy's name. And we talked for a while and he sounded pretty legitimate. And, and he's back in, I don't know, back east somewhere. And he was going to come out to Monterey or Carmel, where I lived at the time. And, and so I said, OK. So so he came out and and they're setting up this stuff. You know, and I'm thinking, this is really cool. Somebody's doing a historic movie about BMX. Somewhere along the line, he says, you've heard of uh, Vintage BMX, haven't you, the, the website? I'm going, no. And he says, you have it? And he starts telling me about Vintage BMX and all these old guys from back in the day and how much bikes are selling. I couldn't believe it. I Amazing. honestly, I couldn't. He's telling me and I'm going, no way, no way. So Can so now that was what, 90s or something like that? And now this thing that I just told you about this bike in Nora Cup, 50 grand. And I just well, heard a number higher than that one a couple a uh, few weeks ago. If you if you knew what those magazines sell for now, it's a uh, it's amazing. How much? It depends on which one it is and what conditions it's in, it's in. I got what? a whole set of I got a whole set of both those, man. <laughs> don't 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 listen. No, I can't. I couldn't <laughs> sell those. No, no, I don't want you to sell. I was them. looking at them just this morning. I was trying to remember somebody's name. Listen, I had to look in the magazine. Do you have a will? Can you put? put me in there uncle bob <laughs> just put me in the put me in the wheel uncle bob that's all i want can you imagine can the can you imagine on, on in the market oz's personal yeah collection, Library. collection. Yeah. oh my gosh wow. his actual yeah oh well let's add to that let's make it really because uh when when i used to go this must have been 15 years ago when i used to go on vintage bmx once in a while uh something would come up and so i'd look it up in the magazines and then i'd make an you know the what do they call the covers when you have like a year of magazines and then you buy a it's a plastic uh the insert right the, the thing that you can protect them with it's like yeah. a loose leaf notebook except eh. anyway so on the cover it's you the, mean like this uh no no picture a loose leaf notebook big fat one yeah but instead of the clips because you'd have to punch holes in the magazine there's those wires and oh you yeah, just yeah open up the magazine you put the wire in there and you can Binder. have a whole year the binders the binders Binder. so now picture my whole set of mag of both uh freestyling and bmx action and bicycle motocross action i had notes all over the cover of the binders because I somebody would ask oh, a question man. about somebody and I have to go in there and look it up. And so I'd make a note on this was the picture of uh dude. I don't know, something or other. So wonder what that'd be worth. That's oh, cool. If, if things get a little <laughs> thin out here, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> well, That's I want to I, I got a couple of questions for you. One, there's a story I want you to tell. It's because it'll be a great, I think it'll be a great segue for me to talk about these two knuckleheads that are with me. Can you tell me the story about Kevin Marshall? So Kevin, here's Kevin's story. And he told me this somewhere along the line when he was about probably 11, around 11 years old, maybe 12. He had childhood arthritis that was so bad. Uh, oh, by the way, all of, none of this is um, puffed up. None of this is, is dramatized. Uh, this is straight up stuff. Um, he had childhood arthritis. It was so bad that that his bedroom was upstairs. His dad had to carry him upstairs to his bedroom, but but he couldn't even carry him the normal way you would carry a, a child, you know, in front for reasons of pain or arthritis or something, he had to throw him over his shoulder 
and carry him up. Uh, Kevin's doctors told him that he'd probably be in a wheelchair the rest of his life. Okay, now here's where we come in. Uh, Kevin's at school one day and, and a buddy of his said, hey, have you ever seen this? And he hands him, guess what? BMX Action Magazine. Mm. And this is all this is all stuff Kevin has told me two, three, four times. And he started going through BMX Action Magazine and and, and he just lit up. Uh, he asked his parents to to get him a mongoose. And how many years this took, I don't know. But he ended up riding himself out of arthritis. Wow. And he went on to this, this one I just found out um, about six months ago, five months ago. Uh, after the, he, he rode so much that somewhere probably around 85, he and a buddy of his started a freestyle team. And they started doing freestyle shows around in the, the New York area. Wow. So that's, we're, we're talking about, okay, that's one guy. That's one guy, one guy. Yep. How many, we were putting out, how many, uh, at one point, BMX Action Magazine was, I said it a minute ago, what was it? 250,000 250, copies yep. a month going all over the world. Yeah. Uh, this is one guy that I didn't know a thing about until about 10 years ago. So we... All of us, we, and yeah, I get a lot of credit for that. I do, because it's my magazine. I get yep. my name in it all the time. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we get credit for that. We, we. Well, here's, I, I got a couple of things I want to add to that. One is, yeah, it was we, it was a collective, right? Because there was a, but every collective has to start with a spark. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it does. The, everything, ha there has to be a first step in every journey. And, and you took that first step. Second, there were other BMX magazines at the time. Not when you started, but during those late 70s, 80s, there were other magazines. Hmm. There was only one BMXA. There was yeah. one, I believe, there was only one that truly had the type of influence, the, the format, the layout, the quotes, the yep. storytelling, it, nothing else was like it. It was the most unique. And I think that is what lent itself to, it just was different, Oz. Yeah. You just did whatever your sp sprinkling of good dust <laughs> was. It was the good stuff, man. And it was just, it was, uh, it was magical as well. Yeah. And yeah. you couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to read the next BMXA. I could wait to read read the new the next BMX Plus. It wasn't. It just wasn't the same, man. Yeah, we talked about that on one of our shows. I mean, it was the authority, right? Yes. In B, the other ones were okay. You know, you looked at the pictures and whatever, but BMX Action was the authority, right? I mean, well, there's a, can I respond to that? Yeah, let me respond to that, please. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, uh, the other magazines, uh, let's see, High Torque was publishing, High Torque got plus after it started to collapse. Uh, it was given, story I got was, it was given to High Torque just so it didn't die. Yeah. Uh, High Torque is one of the companies that I went to, by the way, when I was telling that story, talked to, I can't remember the guy's first name, Golden was his last name, and he wasn't interested. But later on, when BMX Plus started to collapse, um uh what's the guy's name that started it he used to work for me uh i think the title i think he named it bmx plus harry larry one time told me that sounds like a, a laundry detergent <laughs> <laughs> right. uh what's yeah. his name stevens stevens was his name and he used to work for me and and I don't know, should I, uh, let me say this. Let me try to say this kind of politely. Um, there were only three or four of us working for bicycle motocross action at the time. And Stevens was just 
awful. Uh, nobody <laughs> wanted to, we wouldn't even open an office because we didn't want him coming to the office. And so. That was the nice way to say it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh -huh. Direct is so best, Oz, direct him. is best. Yep, and, let her rip, and, Oz. And, and, <laughs> and he, uh, it took him a little while, but he started BMX Plus. I think he was thinking this is BMX Action Plus a lot more. I think uh, that's where he came up with the title. Uh, Harry Leary thought it sounded like a laundry detergent. I love that one. <laughs> so, so anyway, BMX Plus. Here's the difference. Uh, those guys, whether it's the publisher, Golden, whether it, those guys were working for money. It's their job. Right. Uh, BMX Action wasn't BMX Action. I love that thing. That was this was love. This was mm. a religious war. This yeah. was fanatics. We were nutcases. <laughs> at we, I mean, every single aspect of BMX was just in in whoever it was in our heads. And it, it, you can't, you cannot compete with. You cannot compete with somebody like that. No. You can and, compete with somebody that's just uh, I'm doing it. it's a business. Right. You with somebody like that. You it truly showed. With somebody it like truly, that. truly showed. Yeah. I mean, it was my it kids, was it's my friends. These are the people. This is my life. This is what I want to do. This is photography. This is you know, I used to race motorcycles. So I had that two-wheel thing going on, and uh, this yeah, but, is this passion. was way beyond business. Right. Yeah, passion is a pa passion is the the number one driver, rule. right? I mean, yeah, yeah. there's rule. there's there isn't a there isn't a, a a bigger driver, a bigger motivator than passion. And the, the fact that you were able to take your passion and monetize it at some point, and but oh, was, I didn't do that. No, but I it was, hold it. I don't even like that word. But it was driven by I'm, passion, huh? But it was driven by passion, and that yes. was the difference. Yes. I want to tell the reason I heard the Kevin Marshall story. I, uh, when I called Oz to beg him nicely to come on our podcast, uh, which he never said no, by the way, he, uh, I said to him, listen, uh, you may not remember, but the day that you announced that you were no longer going to be the publisher of the magazine, you were going to step out. I sent you a two page letter. I wrote it myself. I wanted to tell you what a huge influence you were on me as a person how just doing all the right things that that it would pay off in the end that you could be that pro you could if you if you tied your shoes right if you tucked your jersey in if you if you raced clean and you did all the right things and you took those two extra pedals at the jump you could make it and uh then being a good guy would pay off in the end and that influenced me and i told him that Second to my dad, he was the most influential man in my young life. And uh, he he would not take credit for it. He instantly told me the Kevin Marshall story. And he said, it wasn't me. It was all of us. And it was you included. And I just said, uh, I thought, that's what a great guy does. And I want to tell you, Oz, I, uh, I, what I have and what I am, I owe in part to you. And what these two guys are. On the bad side, they owe to me. <laughs> you get the, you got to tell you, man, you get the good and the bad. It's just all I'm saying is you get the good and the bad. You know, at that, there was a uh, event in uh, Southern California last year uh, where I got an award. And, and one of the people that they tracked down, uh, let's see, one of the people that they tracked down to speak was... Kevin. And so Kevin and I are sitting up on stage, but who was it that said something like that? Uh, it might have been Greg Hill, but I'm not sure. But mm. somebody said something like that. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I, I, I'm not this modest, milk toast dude that just never brags or anything like that. I, I managed to get it out there, but but there was a whole table full of pros uh, sitting there. 
um, I can remember, I think I can remember most of them. Greg was there, Stuart was there. Um, the Red Baron, uh, he was Dennis there. Dane. Uh, David was there, Clinton. Uh, who am I forgetting? There were two or three others. Uh, and and I'm looking at, at them and this whole audience of people uh, that was out there. And I'm saying, yeah, I was the chronicler. And yeah, I did it really good. And and if you want me to expand on that one, I did it really good. I did it better <laughs> than anybody at in retrospect at that time. I did it better for a whole bunch of reasons than anybody could have done it. I love uh, it. If you want proof of that, look at the other magazines. Yep. Hey, and and um, no so, one, yeah, I was the no one argues that. No one oh, argues that. Right. So I was the chronicler and I did a really good job. But you know, the heart and soul of BMX was these guys, the guys that race, the guys that get on the line, that go, that go out there and do that. And and I want to do another thing with that. Can we? Can I, Bob? Just okay. I don't want to down downplay that award that you got, but that was the Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's in, that's a big deal. You kind of you that's kind of brushed deal. that one to the side. I know. I'm trying to be a little bit <laughs> teeny bit modest here, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, heart and soul of BMX. Uh, but let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to the earlier days of a BMX Action Magazine. And let's say, let's do a hypothetical. Let's say there's a, a bunch of kids out there racing bikes and it's fun, you know, and they go around the track and okay, cool. That never, never, never would have gone where it went. Once again, I'm the chronicler. I saw this. And I recorded it and I did a really good job, but let's get to the it. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the it. If if Greg Hill and Stuart Thompson, and who was on the first cover? Brian Lewis. Brian Lewis. Uh, Hollywood Miranda, if, uh, uh, Harry, all, uh, um, let's do some smaller guys. Um, the Avalanche, uh, Richie Anderson, I, mm -hmm. uh, just name it. If, if, you guys, those guys had not have been 1,000% dedicated to what they were doing. What would I have taken pictures of? A bunch of kids out there joking and laughing and riding their swing, stingrays around. I would, I would have had nothing. But but I had that. I had those you that whatever you call that. Uh, we're back to uh, that's not a religious war, but that's that's one of those levels of commitment. Uh, you know, every time I say that, I think about Greg because I I knew I knew Greg. I think I met Greg when he was like eleven. I can remember us sitting up in the stands of. Uh, Western Sports Arama, way up in the stands, and Greg sitting there, and RL sitting there, and we're just talking. This is way before the magazine, and we're just talking and we're watching motos and stuff like that. Uh, so that goes back to I don't know about ten years old, but maybe eleven. Uh, that's getting real close to fifty years ago. But let me use Greg as an example. That guy was. I'm trying to think of an athlete in some other sport that is famous and deserves it. And I, at the moment, I can't think of one, but, but that mindset, that dedication, physical, mental, life dedication is what I chronicled. Mm. Okay, yeah. and I, now back to me, I did it really good. I, I managed to get that, dedication across in the magazine and right there that that meeting that moment that magic something or other is what got across to 
uh, an entire generation or two of, of I'm going to say kids, young men, girls sometimes around the world and, and did what it did. You know, it's it's funny that you say you, you had the ability to capture, you had the ability to to just get in either a photo or in a story. And like EC said, the way you would the way you would fabricate or make a story, you could take the most normal thing and make it spectacular. And the way it no, would no, stick no, to that us. wasn't normal. That's not, Greg Hill is normal. It's not normal. No, no, we we've no, had no, him no, as a guest. We can normal. tell you right now. Greg Hill is not normal. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> his 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 singular focus and dedication to doing things right, the best, is still is what he does today. I know, and this I know. is Greg, isn't it? This Greg, is this is Greg. Okay, hey. eleven years old. I used to know Greg when he was eleven years old. He hasn't changed a bit. No. Hey, he I want milk. Changed. I want milk. On, I want milk, and I want cereal. He has not changed <laughs> one inch in how long? Fifty years. I love that guy, by the way. Oh, I yep. was one of so my. Do, Hey, so do we. We oh, love that guy in this life. Hollywood, what I think, what I think you're touching on is something that we talked about in the in the pregame before um, Oz came on. Um, what I think what Mike is speaking to. So one of the things for me is I was probably ten or eleven years old, 80, 81, when I really started reading the magazine and like just consuming it, you know, cover to cover, multiple times knew all the quotes. I mean, I used to play a game with a friend of mine, Salami, where we would tell the picture. We would say, do you remember that picture of Pistol Pete? Do you remember the caption? And we would actually remember the captions as well. I mean, yeah, and they, it was, I can't tell. We studied it. We <laughs> studied the magazines. But what Mike's speaking to is, for me, I really thought that The Office was on a mist-shrouded hilltop <laughs> behind it was, gates in a high misty mountain yeah yeah it. <laughs> I, it was it was a magical you really, thing you really thought that huh of yeah. course <laughs> because you because of the way you told the story I remember, action, the, I remember that story <laughs> it was magical. i just love doing those things <laughs> and that's the most mundane thing you were just talking about an office building <laughs> That's, I think, what you're alluding to, Mike. Yep, absolutely. And, and not just that, but in his photos, his choice of photos. In, mm. you know, there'd be a guy, uh, Building Leaping Jones, doing a tabletop on a red line. And it wasn't just that he was doing a tabletop, it's that he had his hand. He was only holding on with his index finger, and the other three fingers were off on this. And I had that, and I studied that. As, how did he do that? How, how do I do that? How do I? And... and and Harry Leary doing that jump that was on the cover, the Leary. I, I mean, I I studied it. I studied it. How did he do that? I want to know how to do that. Your ability to capture a great story without any words, just a great story or or the the essence of what was happening with just a photo. And I have an example here that Oz and I talked about a, a briefly, and I want to show it. How do you capture? Oh, that's oh yeah. Name. That was at the World Cup. Yeah. How do you capture a moment? Listen, there's no bicycle in this. Yeah. Exactly. But how do you capture a moment? No racing, no anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I love that picture. I love it. That was oh. your idea, wasn't it, Mike? Yes, sir. We were bar I had bought those two ponchos at the gas station because we knew it was going to rain. Bark and I were walking around and and I we had tied that balloon to a piece of straw. And uh, was, you were right there and you just started laughing. I go, hey, sit down, watch this. And we sat there and the rain was pushing the balloon down on the ground and we just gave it yeah, our pouty it face. And, and it, there it is. And it became, hold that up again. And it became a spread in yep. the magazine. Which uh, was a joke. It was a joke. And it turned out to be a two-page spread. Uh, I, one of my favorite things about that race was that Murray, who had, they had all the money, they brought a helicopter in. Do you remember that? They brought a to helicopter in to dry hover it. over the first turn yeah. to dry it out. That thing. I remember. That was amazing. That was a brilliant race. That was absolutely amazing. You know, let's do let's do this again. Uh, I was the I was the chronicler. Uh, I was the photographer, and I was a really good photographer. And and there was also something. Uh, you know the the like Jones, the kids on my block 
that I hung out with, I kind of, in a way, I kind of grew up with them. Yeah, I'm the guy with the car. Yeah, but but there's something about. I'm not even sure I can figure out how to say this. There's something. This would be BMX Action Magazine. This would be why BMX Action as a magazine stood very tall. I got another number for you. In all of the publications that existed then, BMX Action wasn't this little kids magazine. It was, uh, uh, I'm going to try to come back to that picture. If I forget, remind me, okay? Uh, magazine sales, newsstand sales. If a magazine sold 35% on newsstands, that back in the 80s was brilliant. That's top magazines like Vogue or something like that. You know what BMX Action was selling at back then? I think it was 75%. The wow. only magazine, uh, there were a few magazines sold more than that. One of them was TV Guide. Mm. Was by the newsstand, <laughs> by the checkout, everybody bought a TV yeah. Guide something like 90 percent uh but for bmx action to sell that high of a percentage on newsstands was just wow uh our printer in uh somewhere in tennessee major donnelly major major printer uh my the my relationship with donnelly the guy my rep at donnelly was he started out when bmx action started out he was brand new and he was actually progressing in the hierarchy of the printing company to a pretty good degree because of the success of this magazine he brought in, BMX Action, and then Freestyle, and then a few others. So hey, that, I, that was we, a big deal. But Oz, let's go the, back. Hold on. Oz, we knew, we the three of us, like, like most all other BMXers, we knew what day that magazine was going to hit the rack. I, I knew, I, and sometimes I would beat the truck to 7-Eleven and stand there waiting for him to unload those magazines <laughs> so he could move the Vogue and the whatever out of the way so we could buy. <laughs> and if you can, like at that. our local 7-Eleven, if you weren't there that day, if you came the next day, they were oh. sold out. Yep. <laughs> True story. <laughs> they and, were Yep. And you know, the there was a movie back then. It was a comedy and it was, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or some big hero guy like that. And then that, that kind of short guy that was kind of a smart ass. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. And yeah, the movie's at, Twins. Yep. Is that what it was called? Yeah. So I'm told, I've never seen it, but I'm told there's a scene in there. They're standing in front of a newsstand and BMX action is right up there in the front. The wow. kids... The kids used to go in and wherever it was, they'd pull it out and look at it and set it right on the front. So that was a big well, deal. Let's can I go tell back you... to the picture of Miranda and, <laughs> well, and Mark. Okay, but I want to tell you one more Miranda picture story. The very first time I got on the cover, the very first time I got on the cover, I knew I was going to be on the cover. So I was there when the 7-Eleven truck entered. And I did not buy a magazine. I took them all and spread them across the front of the case so that was the only thing showing at my 7-eleven lord is my witness i did that anyway back okay so back to the miranda picture at at what was it knoxville or wherever that race was yeah the murray world cup yeah, yeah where was that uh nashville Knox nashville. nashville was nashville. it nashville okay so uh here's what i found that was okay back back in those days uh children my father told me this more than once children should be seen and not heard um back in the, and i was a parent so i understood this back in those days kids are kids okay you know one day they'll grow up and be real people kids are kids uh, okay, and that's kind of the the that was the general impression. Uh, now this is how I look at this. This is a bit of a selective view. True, uh, 
Uh, there were probably a number of other things going on, but one of them was BMX. And all of a sudden, BMX came along, and these kids who went out and rode their bicycles had a platform, a stage. They had a stage. Uh, I used to race motorcycles, so I know how scared shitless you are when you're you wake up in the morning, you're going to race that day. Scared shitless. You can't think, you can't move, your stomach is messed up. You can I barely know. pee, you can barely pee. Yeah. And, yet you, <laughs> and yet you have to pee. And so I know, I knew back then, just the, the courage, the amazing amount of courage it took just to get on the line. I don't care if you win or not. Let's just talk, let's take this in stages just to get on the line. I knew that. All of a sudden, all these kids that are just kids running around, you know, go watch TV or something. Uh, all of a sudden, they had a platform, a stage, where they could demonstrate their courage, bravery, talent. Uh, I don't know. Go on. And just, just take that wherever you want to go mm. with it. They had a stage. Uh some parent, a few parents, this is a tangent, a few parents, fathers, uh, would would take their kids to races and they'd watch them and they'd be going, oh, that's easy. And then a father's race comes. Okay, it's father's race. And they say, hey, let me borrow your bike, kid. Oh, man. And about five minutes later, they're hauling them to the hospital with a broken collarbone because <laughs> it ain't as easy as it looks. <laughs> right. I, I, but I now think... let's take that a step further. BMX Action Magazine. And, all, and now I'm doing a thing where I'm writing a column called Dear Wiz, and these kids, okay, these kids are running around, they're not very smart, they barely get through school, they ride their bicycles all day, they don't know diddly shit, and, and all of a sudden they're writing into me, letters into me that are so brilliant, that are so creative, and so amazing, that I I had to pick myself up. I had I worked at staying. How should I say it? Eyeball to eyeball. You could say this. You could say that you did not dumb down your answers to a kid level. Oh no, it was I one mean, of the best things no, I loved. I really quick, those guys if, aren't dumb. Yeah, they if you dumb. if you wrote yeah. into ah uh, if you wrote into Dear Wiz, your answers or whoever was answering, we, you know they we always assume it was the Wiz. Those uh, those answers were, I mean, they were elevated, and you got all the information, the smart way, entertaining way, fun way, but they were not written down to a kid's level. It was fantastic. Uh, you, uh, if I did the other magazines, eh, figure it out yourself. Uh, but this <laughs> magazine here, no, 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 no. Those those can, Okay, so here's what I'm learning as I'm as I'm watching this BMX stuff come along. As I'm publishing a magazine, as I'm answering, I'm learning that these quote kids are we who we didn't know. We did not know how brave, how courageous, how brilliant, what athletes. We didn't know. We didn't know. I'm sure there's other examples of that. I like the uh, BMX and BMX action answer. To that question but but now let's go back to miranda's picture i i caught on to that very very early on probably before i started publishing the magazine because i used to hang out first off i hung out with these kids in my neighborhood they all came over my my front lawn was a wreck my backyard was a wreck <laughs> these kids would come flying down the street on their bikes and <laughs> hit my front lawn and pitch it sideways and just take all the grass out you know skid clear across the thing and those kids like donnie jones and uh, and the other kids that hung around there uh because i was kind of one of them i got inside and i and i got the uh the unedited version of, of these kids. And so before I went into BMX action, I was already catching on that these guys, these kids are, call them kids, call them whatever, they are brilliant. They are brilliant 
in every way you want to say it. So back to the picture of Miranda. That was Miranda's idea. I understand this stuff. I also understand we're not just putting out a magazine about these kids race bicycles. Okay, so no, 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 no. There is a whole level of <laughs> creativity and dedication and athleticism and competition and focus and intelligence and genius. There's awesome. a whole level of that going on that goes that goes way past the actual racing. And so so I'm at that race and it is a disaster. It is just, I mean, it is the track is gone. I'm so glad I was not a promoter back then because you promote this big race, everything is done, and and you have the worst storm in 50 years. Tracks <laughs> flooded, everything. And and so there's the context. And Miranda comes along and he's got these things and he's got this balloon and he says, Hey, what do you think about this? And he just lit up my brain. I'm going, I could see it when you when we were talking about that, Miranda. When I was looking at it through my camera, I knew that was going to be a spread. I knew it. I don't know. This was a religion. This was a it was. movement. This was a changing <laughs> the world thing that was going on. And all of us were all of us were part of that. Wow. <laughs> So anyway, that is a brilliant That's photograph. Cool. That that kind of photograph occasionally uh, is what separated uh, us from them. Right. Completely agree. Completely agree. Do do you? It's kind of a tough question. I, I don't know if they're they're all your babies, but is there a favorite cover or favorite photograph that comes to mind for you, Oz? Because I know we, we have that. one. We have one. Do you? Oh yeah, absolutely. You do. Oh, I can tell you my favorite photograph of Don't all the episodes. Okay, I'm going to answer your question first, but then I want to hear what you guys say. Uh, here's how I did it. Uh, especially when BMX came along. Uh, now I've got a competitor. Except I didn't really. Uh, I did not compete with BMX Plus. You know who I competed with? BMX your action. pre your your previous our issue last, our last issue yeah, i knew that we got it the last issue every way you do it it's got to be better our last issue and and you know of all the issues we put out i think one and i don't remember which one i think one was just a tick down from the last one and the next one we picked it up again and okay so which Favorite cover or favorite picture? Mm. Favorite picture. Favorite picture. Holy you know, oh, I, mine's easy. Mine is so easy. Can I just tell you mine? My yeah. favorite picture of all, yeah, was the shot of John Cruz when he was there were telephone wires in the background, which framed the picture perfectly. And he's tucked up into he's sideways and tucked up into the bike in a shape that I've never seen before. And that was called the cruise. And, and again, it was one of those things where I just studied every, every little pixel in that picture to see how did he they do weren't pixel. They weren't pixels then. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to know how did he get into that? Like how all twisted yeah. and everything his uniform, his shoes, his laces, everything was perfect as John Cruz always had. And that's exactly what I wanted to be. And that was my favorite picture of all. Oh, uh, we could, you know, what would be fun is just, is just uh, top of our heads, iconic, iconic photographs over the years. Well, then uh, I'll take my favorite ahead. cover. And this is really bad. My favorite cover was of me on Torker doing my best impersonation of John Cruz. <laughs> and it was and it was captured from a little bit different angle but all it was was me doing identical it was just when and uh when i told the photographer that day i, I think it was jim casimus i said or it might have been windy it was one of the two i said this we're only going to do one jump this is all we're going to do i'm going to do it over and over you just get this photo because this is all i wanted to do and it and, turned uh, into the cover and that was a cover of bmx oh. action yeah 
Um, do, do you guys, did you guys ever see, uh, did you guys ever race a uh, Saddleback, Bonsai Hill? I did once. I never nope. did. I only rode it. Eric, uh, I, I never, it? I never raced it. I only rode it when my dad raced off road cars out there. I would sneak over there and ride around on the track, but I never got to race. I, I don't think I was racing at the time. Well, Bonsai, uh, Mike, was Bonsai the way it was earlier when you wrote it? I mean, no, it was no, 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 no. It wasn't the original. It was. It wasn't the original. Meaning, where okay, you came back, you came down the hill, you turned, and it was a cliff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you you're, rode down. Yeah. Except you're going like fifty miles an hour. <laughs> Mach you nine. Just... <laughs> your tires. No choice. Your tires left the ground. There's no oh, choice for yeah. for like about how long. Yeah. 50 feet 60 yeah. feet 70 feet well i used was... to watch in the in the early days i don't know it's probably ernie put a race on there and i'm watching those and okay ernie when ernie first started putting on races uh we didn't have medics or things like that and so uh -huh. i'm a fireman so when anybody would crash ernie would call me <laughs> oh man we're gonna have to so, bring Oz to dirty fest now so we're, yeah so we're at saddleback and i'm watching these i don't think there were pros then but the experts go off bonsai hill i was terrified i was terrified that somebody was going to come loose and just get killed but the photograph that i'm speaking of which i'm not sure you guys have ever seen uh is um uh jp uh paul freeman. paul freeman john paul freeman it's a panning shot coming down uh bonsai hill he's on red line a loop tail red line uh actually i know the number of the bike it was 140 it was lynn caston's 45th i think it was frank uh that that old loop tail red line and Paul Freeman is just, and it's a, it's a bitchin' shot. It's just all, everything you want in a, in a uh, panning shot. And Paul Freeman is just tucked in and he is just flying down this hill. I think, I think uh, when I think of all the pictures going back, that might be, I, I know there's a, I don't know how to say that. That, to me, that goes way up towards the top. What about you, JV? Got a picture in mind? I think when we did this, uh, we talked about this episode on covers. I think that um, that I said it was the world championship one. I'm, I'm looking at a picture of it. It was a 1979 cover with uh, it, the world championships in Indi Indianapolis. It was this cover. I don't know if you could see it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, oh, that's, yeah. Not, that's, uh, that's at the uh, Coliseum. Coliseum. I think it is. That's oh, yeah. the, I actually think Red you Baron. corrected me yep. when I said that the first uh, who's time. Who's the guy in the mongoose yeah. thing? Brian Cornell. Is that Cornell? Yep, Cornell. Uh, Kevin Jackson. Uh, I think it's Byron Friday on the inside and Utterback in the back. Yep. But yeah, look how awesome gnarly, that is. Going off the side. Dude. Yeah, this you're right, though. That is there. the Coliseum, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. What, Yamaha uh, Gold Cup or something like that? Yep. Or was it some other race yeah. that was there? It was just a Coliseum race, I think. It might have been a gold cup. Yeah. You got one you see, a, a, a photo or cover? And then I'm going to ask you guys if you can remember a quote, because I have one. I love. I still say it all the time. Yeah. Um, if, like covers. Or, fi or photo. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I liked, um, I think from an iconic standpoint, um, because the way things are, like the way it's framed, is uh this cover right here of harry that's the one yeah i just i loved the three dimension of it how you know you guys would often put the writer in front of the logo which is right. you know counter to what a lot of magazines would do they would always want to have their branding out in front of the of the subject but you guys by layering it the way you did it actually brings it into three dimension. And then the circle, that was a, a departure from a normal, normally it would be the whole picture. And, and that circle, that always was super iconic to me. Um, the way that was laid out and it's spotlights, you know, that circle creates a spotlight effect for, for Harry and, and the, 
what he's doing, you know, the iconic Leary. Um, that, that one was, uh, just the whole thing of that cover was iconic to me, but I really loved the image on the cover of, um, that Eddie King had. And it's like a, looks like it's from the top and the way oh, he, yeah. he's going really fast. So it's a pan shot and he's sliding and there's it's... dust blowing. And the way you guys created that cover, you banded it, right? So the image is banded across and then there's black and yellow on the top and the bottom. I remember that. And uh, I, yep. I just, that thing was, you know, Eddie was, uh, I had taken a clinic um, with Eddie as a, a young Grom at the time as well. And so that that thing really stuck out to me. I loved that picture. I loved the speed of that picture. I, th I thought I was like, man, there's no way. How do they go that fast on their bikes? How do they do that? How do they go that fast? I, it was always, <laughs> I blew, it blew my mind. And, you know, the creativity of the, the pan shot um, created that that image and that um, that style. Can I tell you, know, you my saw... favorite, can I tell you my favorite quote of all? It was, who, Stu, caramba, he flew. <laughs> <laughs> and they say it all the time to this day. Yeah. Who, Stu, caramba, he flew. <laughs> I thought my dad was the only person that said caramba. <laughs> Caramba. <laughs> uh, and one of uh, course, we're back to BMX action. One of the reasons why it was so great is that you guys, I got to know you guys so well. Um, I did. That was so cool. You know, we'd, we see each other one day at some jumping place in Southern California. Next week, we're in, I don't know, Japan. <laughs> or Paris or Tennessee or uh, anyway. Uh, I learned way back, way, way, way back that the this kids thing doesn't apply anymore. These guys are every bit as dedicated and smart and creative, creative and brave and athletic and everything else you want to add in there. And and some once again, right in there, me understanding that and being pretty good at photography, and right in there is where BMX action came from. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, Bob. Let me ask you a question here that has kind of two parts, um, because you've seen so many uh, riders, and obviously through the lens, and even got to know them and and watch them ride. But was there a standout person that you recognized right away that would be? that turned out to be really awesome in racing. And the other part of that question is somebody, was there someone that you thought would be really successful that actually maybe didn't, wasn't? Oh, I know the second one, Mike Buff. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, let me do, okay. Uh, you're gonna have three, that's three questions. That's three well, points. Okay, I have to try to remember all that. So yeah. you have to help me here. Say, sure. say it again, Let's JD. In, yeah, say, say, okay. I'll say it again. Yeah, start, start with Buff, that loser. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Buff uh, would have been great as a racer. He would, and and he pretty much wanted to do that. Uh, and and then Harrow, uh, uh, the trick team, you know, Harrow. Yeah. Yeah. And us parted. And uh, Buff was hanging around all the time and riding with him and stuff like that. And now, for good, for better, or for worse, or whatever, uh, I think it was probably primarily me that talked Buff into going freestyle. So for better or worse, but I can tell you this, Buff was, he would have been a top pro. So now, is that good or bad? All right. Uh, I think everybody has their own point of view, and I think everybody will have a little different <laughs> answer to that one. Well, I'm going to say for the record that Buff never beat me ever. Now, when he tells his <laughs> side of the story, he's going to tell you that he passed me at a, at a national in Seattle, and he passed me cleaning because he was faster and he got he beat me. But I'm going to say, since I'm since I have a podcast and he doesn't, he never <laughs> passed me and he never beat me. <laughs> and nobody yeah. is as big and nobody is as big a Mike Buff fan as I am. I love. Okay, Mike. now let me tell you something. Now let me try to tell you another thing. And I and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to do a name on this one because he's a good guy. 
one of the top pros. One of the top pros uh, I watched for years racing. And maybe it's because of photography. When, when I photograph people, I don't, I'm not just, I'm not photographing a person. I, I want to photograph their, I want to photograph their heart and soul. Okay. And so I'm speaking now of one racer who was a star and I would watch him race. And I'm thinking of one race in particular. He got out in front and he's out in front of Greg and Stu. And I mean, the heavies. Okay. And he's out there flying and bam. All of a sudden, he slips a pedal, loops in the air, and crashes. Now let me now let me say that a different way. Eric, you're kind of smiling. Do you know where I'm heading with this? I'm not. I'm just. I'm love. I'm loving your storytelling. All, all <laughs> of it. Think, man. I think there are people who can't let themselves win. Oh, who man. subconscious they don't even know it themselves hmm. but they will suddenly they're in front and they will go they will mentally sneak Dude. down the track set a trap for themselves come back fall into the trap and crash yep. i think maybe it has something to do with the responsibility Dude. of winning hmm. you can't... start winning and, and, you know, your load, if you're not a winner is, I don't know, whatever your load is. If you become a winner, your load it's, takes a, a, right. a, a leap of magnitude, yes. a jump of, of magnitude, bigger, higher, heavier, I, more I responsibility. Can, I can speak sense? on that. I can speak on that a lot because I... Yep. I think I, I think in my racing career, I think I was probably capable of being faster sooner than I did. And looking back now as an adult and looking back at my mindset, I didn't feel like I belonged. I, and I was afraid, I was afraid to win because of the responsibility that comes with it, right? If you do it once and you don't back it up, it's an embarrassing thing, right? Because it's a fluke. And, and so once you do it once, if you're going to do it, you got to do it again to back it up. You got to legitimize it. And if you're unsure of yourself or the responsibility that goes with that, then yeah, you will. You'll self-sabotage. You, you'll come out of the gate and you'll get that first pedal and that second pedal will be a 50%, not an 80%, because you're just not sure if you're ready for that. Um, I coach high school kids uh, in mountain bike. I'm a, a head coach for high school mountain biking. And I actually had this talk with some of the parents uh, Sunday at our banquet. And I said, a lot of your kids, you don't even realize, and they don't even realize they're afraid of success. And so yeah, they yeah, don't train. Yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't train their hardest. They don't do all the things because <clears throat> if you train your hardest, you eat right, you sleep right. You do everything that's in control of what you have control of. And then if you don't achieve your goal, now that's a really hard thing to do. You got to look in the mirror and go, that was everything and it wasn't enough. So yeah, the mental aspect of it, but yeah, I do. I, I agree with you. That story about that pro writer you're talking about, it's just, there's a self-sabotage that you don't even realize you're doing that's right. in play. I love these, it. These things up here are amazing machines. <laughs> Quite often they think for themselves. <laughs> you do. And they don't, they don't always think the way you think you want them to think yes sometimes they do stuff like that what was it that you said afraid of success correct yeah a lot of responsibility goes with success yeah. yes <laughs> okay so now the third one i remembered all these <laughs> yeah you actually answered the tough I love it. one i'm first. continually <laughs> 85 you guys i'm 85 years old <laughs> you, so you, i am you. continually i will say i uh, there, I have two magazines on my wall. One is Greg Hill. Uh, that one where he's the smoke is all down there. Oh yeah, full face mask on. You can't even tell if that's Greg Hill. 
One of the things I liked about that picture is I think everybody out there is going, is that Greg? And, mm -hmm. and if they are thinking that, they have to look much more closely. They have to look at stance, body shape, aggressive. They have to, they, it has to become psychological, not just, not just visual. Anyway, I love that picture of Greg. That was Greg in there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, the other picture is this guy. It's a freestyle magazine picture. He's doing a big tabletop out of the pipeline, something or other. And and I was trying to remember his name. This and I've been trying for a couple of days. I I know he's called Spidey or Spider Man. Rich Rich Segura. Yeah, I know, but I couldn't think of who is that guy. He's a one. He's and yeah. looked him up. He is point, one of the nicest, is, absolute nicest guys ever. We were blessed to have him at Woodward Camp, and he was phenomenal with kids. Yeah. Night, just to, remember JV? Yeah, I do. I do. He was really good. Okay, so so forgetting things. 85 years old. Uh, this is the thing. If you guys get to 85 years old, you'll probably do yourself. I'll forget somebody's name and I'll think, oh shit, is this it? Is it is this the first <laughs> stage of dementia? <laughs> well, so I, I, I think I just rounded yeah, I think I already rounded second <laughs> but, base on that one. But pay attention. I'm I remembered all three things because the third one that I'm going to say, and this is with apologies to this is uh my overview of this whole thing. Uh, if you want to, you can say that's arguable. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and I try, you know, when I was doing this whole thing, uh, I tried really hard to be objective within the context of who the really fast guys were. Uh, within the context of let's call it uh the family the bmx action family because advertisers uh i paid it i did not uh vance patterson last year in la uh, vance patterson came up to me and he said i don't know how many people have asked me how much i paid for all the covers that the speedo team got and Vance was good enough to say, I didn't pay for a single one of those. We didn't. And Vance was good enough to say, I don't think you could buy a cover from Osborne. And you couldn't. We didn't do it that way. But was I aware of who our advertisers were? I was the part of the family. Mm -hmm. So there's a balance there. Um, but no, those covers, you know what got the cover shot? Best picture. Best picture wins as it should so anyway yeah. i have in doing this magazine i have an overview i did not pander to mongoose or redline or whoever the biggest out i did not do that i was aware of them i kept them in there uh but who won won best picture wins who's the fastest racer okay so I would like to think that I had about as an objective overview. And I think I also had an overview that was unique, period, unique. I don't think anybody that I can think of was in my position to yeah. see everything that's going on or most of it. From all the different perspectives. Yes. Mm. Right down to the individual guys, like Miranda was telling about that jump thing that happened and the keys to the Porsche. That was brilliant. That was brilliant of me. I'm <laughs> glad I did that. Uh, because this is what, 40 years later, and this guy's telling the story. So that was okay. <laughs> so here's my name with apologies to, okay, the, and this is not going to be a surprise, Greg Hill. He certainly, uh, you know, we from had back a, in the day, yep. from back no, in the no. day from my time. Yep. To this day, his, like we've said, he hasn't changed. No, yeah. he has uh, not, not changed. And we've been blessed to have him as a guest. We're, we are blessed to call him a friend. Yep. And, uh, and when I, when we get to see him now, which we did three weeks ago, 
it was a it was a special treat, a special time to spend talking to him for any minutes of time. It's great, and it's it's the same. I watched that. It's the same. Greg saying, "I watched that thing." Greg saying, "I don't get it. I'm happy go lucky. I make jokes. I don't understand why people think I'm such a <laughs> businessman or something like that." I know. Ask me, Greg. Greg, yeah. Greg might be watching this. Ask me, Greg. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Greg oh, is, any of the four yeah. of us will tell Greg you. Is hey, straight up and down, <laughs> zeroed, type A. He's yeah. type double A. He is He's type double A. That's the word. Uh, <laughs> Uh, top of the food chain. Absolutely. Uh, there's uh, a word for that. I can't. Alpha. Think of right he Al is alpha. Alpha male. There's a, actually there's above that. Uh, mm. I forget. I'll think of it in a minute. See, Space? I'm worried now. I'm worried about is it? Am I getting it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you were close to a lot of writers, and a lot of writers really you know were oh, close to you. Stuart's you were gonna be mad as hell at me because Stuart ruled for a while. He really did. Oh, the Supreme uh, Commander. You know, I could go through uh, uh, Patter both the Pattersons ruled for a while. I'm trying to do an overview. Yeah. Here's all I'm saying. My view, my impression, and I was pretty close. So you need to at least pay attention. Yep. Overall, greatest of all, the time that we're speaking of here back in the day, Greg. Dominant. Yep. W were you ever hit by a writer? No. Man, did I worry about that. But oh oh that was a good question. Let's see if You're I can. The first do this person I ever saw that would lay down on the ground and have the writer go right by the lens. Yeah, I mean it inches, and I yeah. I always wondered, did, has that dude ever been hit? And who was oh, the look guy? At, look. And who was the guy that never got in the magazine for hitting him? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, two stories there. One is you guys were so good. You guys, the guys I were, was photographing were so good. I could say something like, I'm going to be right here. Don't hit me, man. It is I didn't have funny. to worry about a thing. The, the, this was, you know, uh, at races, it's a different thing. I couldn't go up on the line and say, hey, I'm going to be pretty close to the track, so don't hit me, you know. <laughs> uh, but no, I never was, but I thought about it all the time. I did not want to be some doofus that caused somebody in, let's say, a major pro main to lose. No, nope. uh, nope. Well, okay, I do remember. In my head, but the other thing is in my head, I'm going to get the killer picture of all time of this. Maybe it's some pro main that is just stacked. It, maybe it is a pro main that is so intense that the spectators are nervous I, and i mean really nervous it's just too much it's the it's the what it's the unstoppable force meeting the immovable immovable object and something is going to explode it's just too much too heavy too okay i am and, and no way was I going to be the guy that screwed up the results of that race. Yeah, I, I remember the other like side is, but I'm going to get the killer picture of all time of this race. I am going to do that. So I, I remember specifically of a race that uh, that you came up to me right at the finish line and you you reenacted what happened in words to me. And brought the situation right back. And you said, you know, you guys were came out of the first turn and you you knew that whoever got to the next turn first was gonna win. And you looked, you actually looked at each other and you locked arms, and it was all the way up the face of the jump. And it was who you guys just knew that whoever backed down first was was gonna be the guy. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, Were you on my bike? It was like you were living it right there. You knew exactly what we were going through, and it was a heated battle between what was going to happen at from that turn to the top of that yeah. jump was the entire world, the entire race. Yeah. And you you captured it in words to me. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Does he know that? But it speaks, I to, it. I used speaks to, write. to it. Yeah. It speaks to the magazine the though, right? Like yeah. uh, the, the, but somewhere in there is why BMX action was so good. I was a I was a really good chronicler. Mm. I knew I, I knew 
I knew what you guys were. There was a lot of stuff that you got. There was a lot of stuff you guys um, didn't tell me about, but eventually I caught on. You it know, was, it was not just on tour things. Okay, uh, I think you were you were good at both, Oz. I think it was good. Like I think you were good at chronicling. Of course, I mean that's what okay. the magazine was. Uh, I you, I think you were good at two things. I think chronicling is of course right. What you did with the magazine chronicling. Uh, explaining and all that kind of stuff, but also observing, right? And understanding, yeah. right? Paying so attention. yeah, you had to, you had to understand as well. And I think maybe that might go back. I mean, I didn't know you raced a motocross, but going back to racing motocross. So that gives you some insight into the mental aspect of what's going on. Yeah. And you were able to transfer that into what you were doing with the magazine, with the images. I never knew you raced motorcycles. But it makes sense now. It totally makes sense to me why the magazine was as insightful as it was, because mm -hmm. you were you you walked in those moccasins. Yeah, uh, I have to say, I would like I would really like to tell you that I was really fast too, I love it. <laughs> but I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> but I did race. So yeah. Uh, well, but now let's do a different thing. Did I did I ever? interfere with a race uh there was a time it would have been in the 80s when i it, this i'm going to try to describe one photograph but i have to get a little heavy into photography so now picture this buckle up i mean uh, stick with me here uh, you set your aperture. I, I knew where I was going to photograph. This particular picture was first jump. Uh, it was probably a pro main. Uh, the guy I remember in this picture was Jeff Riminer. Did I just give it all away? No? no. Okay. Uh, so this was a pro main. Uh, Riminer came a little bit later. So this was probably in 84, 85, something like that. I had a okay here's how the camera works so i get up to the the jump that i'm going to photograph i know i know how these guys are going to come i know they're going to be funneling down i know where that major picture is going to happen it's going to happen right there so i i have my camera i have my lens i'm pre-focused i have my position where i'm going to take this thing from uh and they're all up on the gate so now when I push the button, here's what's going to happen. These guys are going to be flying at me really fast. Fifteenth of a second, they're going to be blurs in the picture. But here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to show the violence and the speed. I wanted all that to be in one exposure. I had all that set up and I wanted to get really close when I did this. So I had a wide angle lens on there that was probably about a, a, a 20 millimeter. Okay. And I'm right at the edge of the track. I mean, right at 20 millimeter, you got to get really close. And so I'm watching them and here they come. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I hope, I hope <laughs> this all works. And so click, flash, boom, shutter closes. I don't get to see that picture. It's Kodachrome. I don't get yeah. to see it for about a week. But now let's talk about the picture that I get to see in about a week. So uh, everything happened the way I planned it. And guess where? And Ruminer is leading. And guess where his pedal is? His right inside in pedal is about this far from the front of my lens. Yeah, this wish far. And he is going, you guys know, you guys all did this. First jump inside, heading for the inside of the first turn, you know, and you're all bunching up and you're down the track a ways. Uh, in my mind, I can see it. Oz, I, I just can't tell you how much we appreciate you uh, for, yeah. for, for capturing all and, and, and chronicling in, in the way that only you did. And all those little things that you were so passionate about and so dedicated to make sure it was just perfect. Those are all the things that influenced us 
and gave us the opportunity to influence everybody else that maybe we had a chance to do. Yes, and, you did. And, and we certainly wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. 100%. So, 100%. Yeah. Sorry. So I you agreed. whether you want to accept all that praise or not, you're going to have to because... No, I like that, but <laughs> I... I for generations had, to come. Had, had I not been there, had BMX Action not been there, but but everything else been there. It would have been different. May, I, was I was just going to say, may not have been the same. Going to be me, totally different here. I don't think it would have been the same. Yeah. Let me try something there. Uh, uh, Ansel Adams is one of my heroes. Yeah. Okay. I have a fair number of heroes, but Ansel's one of them. Here's, here's a way to describe Ansel. He was the exact right person in the exact right place at the exact right time. And it happens, but not very often. I would like, uh, truthfully, truthfully, modesty aside, just trying to be truthful. Uh, and in retrospect, which I'm pretty good at, I, re I, th I would like to think that I was that right person in the right place at the right time. Uh, the right place and the right time being you guys, of course. The thing is, I agree with you. You were the right person. You were absolutely, I don't think it was by accident. Um, all of the pieces came into play as they needed to. And the subjects were the right subjects for you at the right time. All of that right. was, right. it was all right. And right. that's why, yeah. and that's the reason, right? That it was magical because it was all of these, if you want to call them divine alignment that happened, that's why it was magical. And it was, mm -hmm. it was yeah. truly a magical time for our sport that will never, ever, I don't care what they say, there'll never be a golden era like that time with, with in BMX. It'll never happen again like that. I don't care what they say. Never, ever, ever. We I come close you. to it once a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's explain that. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, explain wow. that one to me. Well, uh, as three weeks ago, we hosted a vintage BMX event here in Southern California. And it was vintage racing on a 70s style track. And it was, it was us trying to replicate what you gave us and uh no 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 it was it was you 60 year old dude <laughs> trying to pretend yeah. you're 16 again <laughs> pretty much there was a lot of that there was a lot, a of, lot that. of that a <laughs> lot of that yes it was. oh man well oz listen again thank you so much for being exactly who you are when you were and right now and for being here today uh it made i'm sure it made all of us oh, man. feel like you said, like uh, us feeling those young guys again. And just, uh, man, meals means the word. I, I'll let these guys finish up and then I'll, I'll come back. Uh, for me, I, I got a chance to sit and talk with royalty today. So, um, you know, I just, uh, you guys. That was nice. that's how that's I feel, cool. man. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for, um, the, what you created uh, I, I know your position, which is, you know, we all created it, but for, for me, you were the spearhead of, of, man, I was motivated so hard, so strongly motivated to be good so that I could be in the magazine. It wasn't even, I mean, it was partly the results, but it was also, I want to be in the magazine. That's when you really felt like you made it. And um, so uh Oz, thank you so much for everything you've done for our sport. And for me personally, I'm my life changed because of two wheels and because of BMX and you were a big part of that. So thank you. Yeah. I mean, echo exactly what, what Eric said. I mean, uh, and on behalf of like every kid growing up in, in our age and being looking forward every month to, to the magazine and getting excited about that. I mean, thank you for that, that, that alone. I mean, that must make you feel good. I mean, at the end of the day, that you made little, that. you made kids excited to come to see the work that you did through the eyes uh, of your lens, really. So thank you, and thanks for being on the show. This has been great. Okay, let me respond to that. Thank you, guys. Uh, I love getting. I'm going to put it this way. It's not the way I. Was, I love getting dragged back into BMX. That was such a big part of my life. 
I love it. So thank you guys. Uh, you guys, if you're fortunate, if you pay attention, if you're lucky, will one day be 85 years old. Maybe older than that. Yeah. At, at 85 years old, let me do this. I think I did this with Mike the other day. Uh, let's say, let's say that, uh, let's see, how long am I going to live? I would like to hit a hundred. Uh, I want this thing to be working. Hit a hundred. I still want to be able to take pictures, but let's say I make it to a hundred. Uh, well, sometime after that, I'm going to die. And so St. Peter, we were talking, weren't we talking about this, Mike? St. Peter. Yes, sir. So St. Peter, uh, Mike says St. Peter's going to send a limo for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going, cool, man. Maybe he could hire the playmate of the month to drive. That'd be great. <laughs> but anyway, so a day will come when I have a conversation with St. Peter. I hope, I, you know, there's the other option too, but but I hope that it's a conversation with St. Peter. So so I'm at the pearly gates and I sit down and and he says, so how'd you do? And I'm going... So here, here's, I have some choices. I could say, well, you know what? I mowed my lawn every week. I had the best lawn in the neighborhood. Uh, so let's say I answer like, St. Peter's going to go, what the fuck? <laughs> I mowed don't your think, lawn? I don't, uh, think I don't want to do that. I don't think St. Peter's going to say, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't want, I do not want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I want to say, I want to say something like, buckle up, buddy. I want to tell you about what I want to tell you about my life because it was bitching. Yeah. I mean, it was killer. That's and right. I want to tell you about it. So let so me anyway. tell you about the misty mountaintops of yeah. Yeah. So BMX was uh as as an 85 year old right now. I look back on BMX and I that BMX, those years. Somebody said the golden age, those years, you guys, that magazine, being close to you guys, being involved with you guys, and then all of us making our individual thing happen in such a brilliant way. Uh, that's such a big part of my life that I can, I can sit here at 85 years old and I can think, yeah. I love it. Cool. Yeah. I love it. It's awesome. So, On behalf of all of us BMXers and Mike Buff, yeah. thanks, Oz. <laughs> and Mike Buff, say hi to Buff for me. Phil. <laughs> hey, this is John Cruz. Uh, no, we're not having an earthquake. I have Parkinson's. What, what do you think of that, Michael? Uh, some, we ought to pitch in and get you a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. But, but seriously, um, this is John Cruz, uh, and uh, I obviously have, have something going on, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's 20 years ago this year, actually. Um, so uh, I've, I've chosen the Davis Finney Foundation over the years to be my voice for Parkinson's. If you're not familiar with the Davis Finney Foundation, Davis Finney is one of the winningest cyclists in American history. Uh, he's the roadie. If you guys yeah, remember those roadies out there, um, all that lycra and stuff. But uh, he is just a great man. Um, when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he decided to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and his, his choice was to start a foundation. And that foundation uh, obviously wishes for a cure for Parkinson's because there is no cure at this time. But they recognize that you have to live with Parkinson's and your caregivers are having to live and take care of us. And the Davis Finney Foundation, that's what they do, is they only look for a cure, but they look for uh, ways to enhance the quality of life for Parkinson's sufferers and their caregivers. So uh, I appreciate all of you supporting the Davis Finney Foundation. 
Uh, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, I know we all have something, right? So I think it's important to give back to our communities, whether it's BMX or a, a foundation that's close to your heart. If you don't have one, please choose mine. I appreciate you. Well, thank you, John Cruz. You certainly have made a difference in a lot of lives, including mine, and giving us the opportunity to do something good for somebody else is, is fantastic. So thank you, thank you so much. And on behalf of John Cruz, please find a way to give something to the Davis Finney Foundation on behalf of John Cruz, the Dirty Knobs, and your entire BMX family. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again. And uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right, coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. Now. It's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack. You can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares, your passion of cycling. We are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. So Ultra guess, Max. Did you ever find yourself outside on a hot summer day, maybe washing your car? I don't know what happens. But all of a sudden, your shirt is wet, and you're all full of suds. So you just take it off just for the neighbors. Well, the neighbors called, and they want you to buy a new Ultra Max t-shirt. Not available where fundraising car washes are, but can you still buy an Ultra Max t-shirt at DirtyKnobs.com. Ultra <laughs> you guys are one take wonders, man. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Toby Henderson, founder of Box, co founder of American BMX Companies, the owner of Race Inc., Botima, and Cook Brothers Racing. We brought these two companies together to bring you the best quality product you can get for a BMX bike. We're all about the rider, so please check out our Level Up and Rider First programs. See you at the track. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, Hit me up. I'll hook you up with one. Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, 
They can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Carbone Cartel, for the finest carbon BMX racing products in the market. Make sure you check us out at carbonecartelbmx.com. Our products are ridden by the best in the sport. Drew Polk, Nick Long, and many, many more. This isn't the cheap shit you get from Ali Bobbitt. Make sure you check us out again at carbonecartelbmx.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High-performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K-O-O-L-S-T-O-P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Hey everyone, this is Brian Wilson with ProGate. We are the official gate supplier for UCI and the Olympics. We even make a gate that you can practice on in your driveway at home. Wait a minute, who else are you making a gate for? We're making a gate for Dirty Fest. You guys got to come and check it out. Whatever Dirty Fest needs for this track, we're going to supply it. We're not some French knockoff, you know. We're the gold standard in BMX gates. And make sure to check us out at progate.net and bmxtracksupply.com, and we'll see you at Dirty Fest for sure. Take care, everybody. Hey, folks, this is Mike Rodriguez, a.k.a. Mr. Crit. I've been racing and making number plates since 1980, you know, like when they used to do one-pedal starts. But, you know, Crip Blade has been around for 43 years. The last four decades, the who's who of BMX have raced a crit number plate straight to the handlebars. And, you know, you get that guy, Mike Savage, the international man of BMX, still doing it strong. And, you know, back in the day, the plates used to be reversible because there was multiple sanctions. And you could put, you know, one sanction on one side, one on the other. Now, you just got one. But crit is still reversible. And that logo is still on the back. For guys like Mike and your rad guys, you know, like Mike Miranda, who would turn those handlebars and twist them up. And we got it rad just for you. All right. Hey, where will we see those plates? Those plates you can see at every single bike shop that, that, that stocks BMX stuff in the USA and Canada. And where will you be at? Will you be at an event sometime soon? Damn, I'm sponsoring the Dirty Fest. And I can't wait to come out to Southern California and, and get dirty. Amy Griffiths, still made here in the USA, used by world champions like me, Tommy Brackens. If you want to know more about the best grips on earth, go to amy.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise and you can take phone calls and even hear turn by turn GPS directions. Ready? <laughs> and that's going in. Yeah. <laughs> We need a doing. All right. What's your nickname for, uh, for like from the mic? Do you have a no. no. You don't have. I don't really have a nickname. It's my, oh, just Mike on the mic. Pain in my ass. <laughs> that, she got that's one. That's getting edited. Yeah. <laughs> We're putting that in. Hi, I'm Mike Miller, author of Day One by Michael Miller. And a special offer going out. Anybody who buys the book between now and Dirty Fest, which is April 28th through 30th, I'm going to take all the money from the book and send it to the Davis Finney Foundation for those with Parkinson's. So get your copy on Amazon.com and we'll make a donation. Hey, what was the name of that book again? Day One by Mike, Michael Miller, which is me. I'm sorry. Hey, what was that name again? Day One by Michael Miller.
a support the podcasts that support us, our friends, uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX, uh, Big Bike BMX, and BMX Weekly. Check them out. Check them out. Our friends. What's up, everybody? It's your friend Isaac from Big Bike BMX, and I've got a podcast with my best friend, 80s BMX, Craig. Yep. And guess what, you guys? If you have enjoyed your time here on the Dirty Knobs podcast, we'd love for you guys to come over and hang out with us at Big Bike BMX where we've got all your old school legends and BMX from the past and today at Big Bike BMX. Isaac, come check us out. We'd love the opportunity to win you over. And if not, hey, it's just another place to talk about BMX with your grimy friends. It's fun. Hey, Dale Holmes, I want to tell you something. One of my favorite podcasts that I never miss is BMX Weekly. Even though it has an accent, I still love it. (laughs) Cheers, Mike. You can get all the podcasts on bmxweekly.com. Old school, mid school, today's school. Check it out. Yeah, BMX Weekly. <laughs> hey, here we go. Hey, Beer Budget BMX, baby. Coming at you live from the Beer Budget Studios over here at the Hack Shack Quarantine. Oh, man, we're coming in hotter than the Satan's nutsack. Yeah, we are dirtier than an Alabama strip club where reclass pros go and get lap dances by their half sister yeah the only show that, that'll make you second guess your life choices like an amish on an e-bike hey if you guys enjoy what you just listened to make sure you tune in every wednesday night to the all things bmx show the only live streaming podcast show in the game right now even ask mike he's been on vicente has been on still waiting for that other guy to come on the show you can find us on youtube twitch and facebook and you can also find us at allthingsbmxshow.com. Keep it dirty. Would you quickly tell us about what's going on now and the Osborne Gallery? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you guys know probably that I have a gallery of uh, uh, fine art photography gallery in Livingston, Montana. And uh, if you're ever in Montana, stop in. Ma- no. uh, Livingston, you'll love it. So did I leave anything out of that? That's kind of, I think I probably did, but that's kind of where I am right now. One thing, if it's not too late for us old broken down BMXers to buy something from the gallery, is there a website we can go to? Can we buy? Can we still afford it? And can we buy? Can we buy something? <laughs> uh, my pictures are getting pretty expensive, <laughs> but I do have a cowboy book that's only sixty five dollars. Fantastic, uh, and and that's at uh, Osborne Galleries. Uh, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. Where you buy things? We'll, we, the we'll take care of that. So, we'll make yeah. an ad for you. Yeah, how'd you do that? Who's doing? I was that? there. He was there. there. Hang on a second. Put that up again. You were there. You were in Livingston. There's a bar. There's a bar on this corner that I was standing Uh, out of, and I took a picture. Just a minute. I have to get oriented here. That okay? Uh, That 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 store on the left hand corner. Walk across the street. That's where Stewart almost ran over me one time. Walk across (laughs) the street. Turn left. Walk down to the see that dark area. Then there's a light stone area. Yeah, and then there's a bright area. The next door is mine. Wow! Wow! All right, look how close I was. Yeah. Jeez. 